What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Acura Audio Garage. Today we're going to be finalizing the DIY Pro Series on our 2004 Acura TSX. We are going to be installing a 6 channel amp and a mono block into our TSX. We're going to be putting them in the trunk. Our system is going to be probably around 800 watts total so we can use the factory alternator. Before I get started I'm just going to ask that you give the video a like. There's going to be a lot of information so you're going to want to make sure you pay close attention. And let me give you a look at some of the amps we're looking at. So for the amps we have a lot of different brands represented, a lot of different configurations. I'm going to go over the best configuration for your TSX and then you can make the decision on what you want to do. So by far the easiest amplifier to install is going to be our plug and play amplifier. This is the MB Quart variant, so MB Quart, but this size, it's the 4 channel, looks just like this amp. It comes with the harnesses for you to plug it in and just start enjoying it. The way this amp works is it takes your tweeter and your front door speaker, that acts as one channel. Then your rear door speaker, so your rear door speaker and your rear deck speaker are treated as one channel. So ultimately ends up being a four channel amp. So these two get put together, those two get put together and all of the speakers in the car continue to work. These are no longer subwoofers, they're, they're treated as regular full range speakers. So that's one of the options you have. It's four channel amp, that's gonna be the easiest. If you wanna treat your six by nines as subwoofers or su swap them for a sub, then you can look at the five channel amps. So we have the MB Quart that we sell. Uh, we were trying this Soundstream Stealth. There are a ton more you can choose from, but you can go with a five channel amp configuration. You bridge these two, so four ohm, four ohm, final impedance, two ohm. You treat them as subwoofers, you put them on a five channel amp, so then one, two, three, four, and you get new speakers that have a passive crossover, so you can treat this door speaker right here and this tweeter as one channel. So you can get away with a five channel amp there. You treat these as component speakers, you put a crossover or a bass blocker on the tweeter. So these get, front speakers get their own channel, rear speaker get their own channel, and then your two 6x9s are treated as subs, so they get one channel for both of them. So that could be your five, could be your five channel amp installation, pretty straightforward. If you want to keep all your speakers, you're going to want to look at six channel amp. So the six channel amps that we were exploring in the past were this NXL900.6D. It's a DS18 six channel amp. It's rated for like 150 by six, but it does not get to 150 by six. I mean, in overall volume, it's pretty loud, but here are MB Quart NA3 uh, 600.6 .6 is rated for 60 by six. And this amp gets louder than this amp in an actual useful application. So, so what we're gonna be using is going to be the JBL A channel amp. If you're gonna follow this video, and you don't want to use the JBL DSP amp, here are the two amps I think you should really consider. So if you're more of a sound quality guy and you don't need your car to be blaring loud, you can look at the Kicker KMA 600.6. .6. It's a marine amplifier, it's six by 50. So 50 watts to each speaker at four ohms, 100 watts at two ohms, and it gets plenty loud and it's a good quality amplifier. It is a little big, it has screw down terminals, so it's pretty easy for you to install the wiring and all that stuff. If that's not enough power for you, then you should look at the DS18 ZXI six channel amp, which does 600 by 200 watts at four ohms RMS. So six by 200 at four ohms, meaning every speaker is gonna get 200 watts. You're pushing the limits of your car at that point, and you're pushing the limits of the factory wiring. So if you wanna go that loud, you wanna go 200 watts RMS to each speaker, I recommend running new speaker wire to every speaker. But if you're gonna use that amp, and keep it low power you can get away with the factory wiring just know if you're gonna push that amp you're gonna want to run new wiring so we're gonna assume you're gonna go with the kicker 600.6 marine amplifier so i'll try to guide you along with that in our install for our install we're going to be using the jbl dsp amplifier this amplifier is going to do 40 by 8 at 4 ohms and 60 by 8 at 2 ohms so since we're using j we're using jbl speakers for our installation we're going to be running this 60 by six because we are gonna use those last two channels to power our kicker key, which is gonna power our subwoofer in the trunk. So those are the two amps we're gonna be using, the JBL DSP A channel amp and the kicker key. And then we have a couple other accessories we need to get together. So let me show those to you. If you're following us step by step, you're using the JBL DSP amp and the kicker key, you're gonna to wanna to pick up a four gauge amp kit. 
OFC wire. If you're using the KMA 600.6, the kicker amp, you're going to want to pick up a 4 gauge amp kit. If you plan to install the DS18 6 channel amp, then I recommend you grab a 0 gauge amp kit. So I got everything that I think you will need on the table. Some stuff isn't represented properly in its quantity, but just know it's for illustrative purposes. So, talked about the amp kit, talked about our power distribution, fuse distribution. Still have our fuse that needs to go in the uh, engine compartment to protect any shorts, any fires. Then we're gonna need six channels of RCAs in total, or depending on the amp you're using, you might just need four. So I recommend picking up these. It's a four channel, 17 feet, more than enough length. There will be a pair of RCAs in here, but you're gonna need another pair. And then you're gonna need some speed wire. I recommend about 40 feet of speed wire. You need to use two bundles of this. So they sell them in 25 foot bundles, so you can get 25 foot will go from the front to the back, but you need to do it twice. So you need, I would say 20 feet would cover it. So you need about 40 feet or two of those bundles. Then of course your amplifiers. Then you're gonna need to pick this up from us. This is the amp bypass. They're all labeled to what speaker they go to. And this is the factory output of the radio. Now I need you to pay attention real quick. If you're doing this on the factory radio, this is the output from the factory radio. As you can see, there's only four RCAs. Each RCA corresponds to a channel. So here we have rear right, here we have front right, then rear left, front left. So you only have four channels of audio out, but you need to amplify six. The factory amplifier does this. Your aftermarket amplifier is gonna to need to do this. Our JBL amp can take care of it, no problem. Remember in our four channel amp, they were bridged, so we were only dealing with four channels of output. But if you're grabbing the, grabbing the DS18 amp or the Kicker KMA 600.6 amp, they're going to take six RCA ins, but you only have four to give. So you're like, what the hell do I do? So the good old fashioned method back in the day was take one RCA, you split it to two, you take your other one, you split it to two, and now you turn four into six. You can still do this. Um, sometimes they introduce noise. There's definitely a possibility. There's no reason why you can't do this. If you don't want to run the extra RCAs, or if you're dealing with noise from these, what you're going to want to do is both these amps have an input selection, meaning the kicker amp, you can say, hey, we're getting audio over two RCAs, we're getting audio over four RCAs, or we're getting audio over six RCAs. So there are little switches, I'll show them to you, I'll put them on the screen. You're gonna hit input A and then input B and then input C is gonna come from input A. So you only have to run four RCAs, you're only gonna connect four RCAs, but all the speakers will work on the kicker amp. The DS18 amp has the same feature, but you need to run at least four RCAs. So on the, DSA, on the kicker amp, you could run just two. I wouldn't recommend that, run four no matter what. But on the DS18, it has the same feature where you can put, hey, get the inputs from channel one and two for channel five and six, which means you'll send four RCAs, but all six channels will work. What you're gonna run into is if you use a cheaper amp, so SCAR, DS18 has a cheaper one, whatever cheaper six channel amp you have, is not gonna have that input to say, hey, grab the input for channel six from channels one and two or three and four. Instead, it's gonna want its own input and you're gonna run into that situation where you have to use these. It's not a problem, just know that this is what you will have to do if you don't find an amp that has that feature. If you have an aftermarket radio installed, you wanna make sure it has six RCA outputs so that you can use those outputs to drive the speaker amplifier and the subwoofer amplifier separately. So you're still only gonna send four channels of RCA to your main speaker amplifier and then two for your subwoofer. So you wanna make sure you pick up an amp that has that feature also for the amp bypass you're still going to need it because you need to connect to all your speakers that's on this harness but you won't use this harness if you have an aftermarket radio first things first is your power wire so remember we're probably all going to be using four gauge so four gauge wire you want to mount your fuse somewhere this isn't the best method but it does get the job done you can see it's not going anywhere yeah it moves but so does this and this is attached to the main power cable so it's not the end of the world you do want to probably make a little fuse mount this isn't even the original battery but just giving you a heads up you definitely want to use a fuse and you definitely want to mount it in place you don't want it losing loose and all over the place then you want to zip tie your wire you can see there's a zip tie there and then you want to run it inside I'm gonna roll footage from our other video because I'm not gonna be redoing this again but I am going to um, take panels off this side and I will show you that so I'm gonna get started with that right now I got some of my drilling 
my step bit started doing its work. Now we'll see it here, that corner down there. Let me see if I can get some light in the right area. So, you can... so there you can see the point of where my new drill is. So it's... so it's safe to drill there. There's nothing on the other side of the firewall. So I'm gonna finish my hole and then I'm gonna install my grommet. So there's my hole once it's done. Now my grommet is in so my wire won't be damaged by metal. And it's protected with the grommet. I'm gonna sleeve this and then I'm gonna seal it so that it's waterproof and no water is gonna get through that hole as well. All right, cool. So our wire is zip tied. Our fuse block is zip tied. This isn't going anywhere. This is wrapped against the battery terminal. You don't mount this yet. You mount that at the end. You don't want to, you don't want to be working with a live wire, but everything under the hood is good. Now, we need to start taking trim off to get our power wire down this side to our trunk. I'm gonna start with the trunk because it's gonna be the easiest and then when it comes to subwoofer installations or running power wire, I'd like to zip tie the wire along the way and make sure I know where the wire is at all times. Because unlike your camera, if you watch the camera video, if that camera wire gets pinched, spliced. Yeah, your camera may not work, but it's not the end of the world. If this happens to your power wire, it could be something bad. So I'd like to see where the wire is and zip tie it along the entire way. Your power wire is all nicely zip tied all the way from the front. Nope, oh, let me show you that. To the back. So here it is. So now what I have to do is just put all our trim back. To start running our wire, we're gonna take apart some panels. First thing you're gonna need to do is this center console. So this middle pocket pulls right out. It's right here. Oops, sorry, it's this one. So this one, you can literally just pull it out. It does have the light here that you need to twist and remove and then it's going to have a clip that you're going to need to pull out you can see this one's broken then you're going to need to pop this up because there are four holes screw holes that hold it down and this is held in with clips so you can just pop it up if you need to see how this is done check out our radio installation video it'll show you exactly how to do it i'm going to assume that if you're doing this you're a little bit more advanced you kind of know what you're doing, so removing this really shouldn't be an issue for you. Then here's our factory amplifier. We got some wiring in here, but just disregard it. It's from previous videos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get our factory amplifier up and out of here. It's gonna be two, two bolts, you can see right there and right there. And then we have harnesses in the back that we need to disconnect. I'm ready to remove our factory amplifier. So with those two bolts removed, you can literally just lift it up, pull it towards you. And then you have two connectors back here that you need to get rid of. They both have tabs at the top. Let's see if I can get one out on camera, but it's gonna be hard. You're gonna wanna use two hands, disconnect this, get your amplifier out of here. So yeah, so the plug and play amp, obviously you have to connect the harnesses. We're gonna go in here, it fits right there. It's a tight fit, but it fits, and then you can mount it in place with some zip ties or some screws and plug all your harnesses in and you're set to go. For our install, we're not doing the plug and play amp. We're gonna be doing the eight-channel DSP amp, so we're gonna be running wiring into here. Here's what it looks like. It is a decent sized cavity, so you can fit some stuff in here. Um, so if you want it to fit like a line-out converter or something. And then here are the two harnesses we're gonna be dealing with. Now I'm gonna get started on taking apart the trim on that side so I can run my wiring. I picked these up. Um, it's like a little bit of a custom kit. So you have four panel tools and a screwdriver. It's a nice quality screwdriver, so I'll show it to you. So here it is, pretty long. You're installing radio, speakers, anything really. It has a magnetic tip, so pretty good. You know, nothing crazy, nothing game changer, but here's the pry tool that comes in there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna remove this piece of trim, this piece of trim. I'm gonna loosen this. Then I'm gonna remove this piece of trim. On the driver's side, it's a little tougher because of that lock. On this side, it's real simple. You're just gonna literally find a location where you can get in and begin prying up. Under here are metal tabs, so you wanna be careful. I don't know why they use metal, not plastic on the TSX, but it is what it is. So you're pulling up metal tabs that are stuck in metal that are latched onto plastic. So it's very easy to break something. So you just wanna massage it, you wanna be careful. Like here you can see I'm starting to lift, but it doesn't really wanna lift. So I'm gonna to move to this side and see if I can get this up some. So there, I got in there okay. You heard a little bit of a clip removed. Gonna keep going down. 
see more clips you hear more clips kind of releasing more keep going in come on getting real okay it's hard with the camera but once you get some of it off you can use your hands to get better leverage there we go so now I just need to free up that edge so I freed up that edge so you see here we go here's a plastic clip you see these four right here they look like they got scratched so right where my thumb is those are metal clips that are now stuck inside of the car to get these out you're gonna want either a flush cutter or a plier squeeze them together and pull up be careful pulling these out is so annoying because you can easily lose one this one's a little bit rusty but I think we'll have a better shot with this one there you go so that one there's these metal tabs on the sides that's what holds it in so on here I kind of messed that one up a little bit so I didn't get the tab so it's bending back so that's what's really making it more difficult for me sometimes you're gonna have no choice but to have to push them back down because they were either taken out improperly or when you're taking them out they got messed up whatever happened you can buy replacements i'll throw a link over the video so you can see where to buy them that's to save three i lost one into the hole now to continue our panel removal i'm gonna pull that and we're gonna pull this back to the side it has a clip in the back so this panel right here has two clips one up here one up there so you can just pull it out that way just make sure that you pull this sleeving off first so that these little tabs here don't break off then for here we want to release it up to about there so pull this back you can put it back over here so it doesn't get all flappy on you so we'll put this back on track so you know there you go there this is back so it's not all flappy and then you just release right there then side we're gonna release as well so we'll release here and then release that I should have done this before but you're also gonna want to pull the seat forward so be careful what you have here you don't want to squish anything but I'm just gonna pull the seat forward a little bit it's loose but we need to get this part loose so here you can for this next part it's up to you how much you want to disassemble you can get the wire through here pretty easily with a snake but if you want you can take this off pull the seat out and really get the wiring secured and you know zip tied in place where you want to or you could just pull this and snake the wire underneath the seat for our use case we're going to pull the seat we're going to remove this and we're going to properly tuck the wire but in the meantime before i get there i could just massage this out of the way and lift this up with my hand or my pry tool i want to start from down here where my fingers have grabbed lift up like that and then here you want to be careful it kind of goes around the rubber um, sealer so has two clips here and here I lost both my clips inside the car so one's here one's over there so I want to grab them and put them back but the reason I took that off is so I could show you what you have to do here so this you pop off and then you can just push it out like that it goes the steering I'm just steering. the seat belt goes below it so this will just literally come right off all you need to run your wire you need to fully remove it you just needed it to let go just when you pop it out it has clips so here's a clip at the bottom you want to make sure you put that clip back most of the times when you do that the panel loses the clip so you want to take the clip out pop it back into the panel so when you go to put it back in it goes back in correctly but okay we have our pathway for our wire opened up now i'm going to get my wire I'm gonna start running my wire. This side of the car, I'm gonna be running the four channel RCA. I'm also gonna be running my speed wire. Remember, it's two runs of these, about 20, I wanna say about 35 to 40 feet in total. Just two runs of 20 feet. We wanna go from behind the radio all the way to the trunk once, and then again from the trunk or from the radio all the way back up. Uh, we wanna have those two lines, run those two lines so we have the ability to configure our system any way we want. I'm also going to grab some uh, passive crossovers so I can show you how to wire those if you have component speakers installed. Now to get some of these stuck white clips in, you can just use this and lift up 
if this doesn't do it, do it, then you can use this guy. This guy's a little thicker and can get it in a little bit better. But there you go. That's how you can use these tools to remove those clips that get stuck on there. All right, so we got the seat out of the way. I know this isn't probably where you want to put your seat. If it's in nice mint condition, you can throw it on the roof. You can put it somewhere nice. Here, we just slid it to the side because this, as you can see, is not even a good seat. But what's holding it down is one screw here. And then you have some clips that grab it from the front. For these clips, you just pull up. So you pull up with force, it releases the clip. You undo that screw, your seat is gone. This is being held in by one 10 millimeter right here. Let me show it to you. So here's what it looks like. Screwed into the side. Then you can take this, lift up, and that will free it. It's hooked on, oh, this hook is broken, but it's hooked on right there. It goes into here. This was probably taken off before and broken before. It has a second hook here, you can see. But once you bolt it down, it stays in place. So now, with all that out, you can see the clear route that my wire takes. And that's the route we're going to follow with all our wiring. So you may be wondering why we ran the power wire on that side and why we're running wire on this side. It's so that you don't get any interference in your RCAs or your speaker wire happens is when you're pulling a lot of current that power wire generates noise around the actual wire and it'll interfere with this that's why this is actually sleeved so that it can reject some of that noise and your RCAs have that too that uh, noise rejection technology so it's just good practice that you run them on opposite sides when you're doing just subs it's really not a problem to run it on the same side It's really it doesn't happen often that you'll get interference because of power and RCAs on the same side for subwoofers but for speakers, it can happen, so you're better off just running it on the opposite sides like us. I have the entire car apart now, so I'm going to begin running my wire from behind the radio down all this way to the trunk. Oh boy. Who's your good boy? Who's your good boy, huh? Who's your good boy? I dropped the glove box down. I ran wire right in here to there. You're going to want to leave some slack here. It goes into here and then down so i'm going to start zip tying i'm going to zip tie this obviously out of the way here you want to leave yourself some slack and you want to make sure you zip tie it so if you do have to pull it doesn't get pulled or yanked from here but this is about how much extra space you want so here's our runner speed wire our rcas this is other speed wires just not sleeved it's some we have laying around so now i'm going to take that and start running it back i zip tie my wires so you can see there's some zip ties here then they're zip tied up and out of the way so I can still get to the air filter. And then they're zip tied over here just holding them. So you want to zip tie something similar to this. Keep them all out of the way. And now we're going to start coming down and to the back of the car. The rest of the wire is zip tied under this trim piece all the way to the back. Up some. And now we have to get into the trunk. Alright, so I finished running all my wire. It's now in the trunk. So here are the new wires we ran. Here are the existing wires that we had. Now, don't forget to run any additional wiring you may need. So when we did the sub video, we ran a base knob for that side. The JBL DSP amp has a base knob, but we're not gonna be using it. But when you finalize your wire, you don't wanna realize, hey, I forgot the base knob, I forgot the meter, I forgot this, I forgot that. So you wanna make sure you run that before you zip tie anything in place. All right, so all our wiring is in place. We got to start hooking stuff up now. We're going to start in the trunk, hooking the amps and stuff up, and then we'll hook them up in the front. You want to pay real close attention to where wires go because it can get real tricky depending on your exact setup. I'm going to show you on the bench how to hook things up, and then we'll apply it here in the actual trunk. The speakers we're going to talk about first are your front component speakers. So if you're going with a component set, meaning it goes with a woofer and a separate tweeter, you're basically replacing what's in the door now. So a woofer, a separate tweeter. You're gonna want to use a crossover or a base blocking capacitor or something to protect your tweeter. Your tweeter shouldn't play below around 3000 Hertz usually. So there are a couple ways to do that. When you buy speakers from us, we have the tweeter harness with the base blocking capacitor. This protects the tweeter to about 80 Watts, 60 Watts. So if you're doing the big amp, the 
ZXI six channel DS18 amp, you're gonna blow these up. This isn't gonna be substantial. You're gonna need a bigger base blocking capacitor in order to handle that much more power or higher level speakers with a dedicated crossover. So I'm gonna show to you how to hook this up. I just wanna make you aware that if you don't put some sort of protection on your tweeter, it's gonna blow up. Also, if you're doing this with a six channel amp, you're gonna want to connect these together using the same output from the amp. And then in order to do that, you're gonna need to protect this tweeter. So out of the factory wiring, the tweeter and the woofer get their own separate lines. You can keep it that way or you can put them together, but then when you're going to connect the tweeter, there needs to be either a base blocking capacitor or something to protect it in its way. This is the inline crossover for Pioneer. So these actually go together. Um, I have a real nice crossover here from Hertz. So I'm gonna show you how to hook it up real quick but just know your front speakers, if you're going with component speakers, this is something you're gonna have to do. If you're going with coaxial speakers, you're gonna leave the tweeter disconnected, disregard this step. But if you're going component speakers, you're gonna to wanna to pay close attention. Out of the amplifier, front left positive, front left negative to our crossover. It goes in positive, in negative. Then we have woofer positive, woofer negative, tweeter negative, I mean tweeter positive, tweeter negative. They're all real nice crossovers right here. So now our tweeter gets hooked up to the outside, our woofer gets hooked up on the other lines. The way this is gonna work in the car is since you have your speed wire, you're gonna take your front left and front right from one bundle and hook it up to the woofer. And then from the other bundle, you're gonna take it up and hook it up to the tweeter so that when you get to the front of the car and you're hooking up to the amp bypass, you have a pair of whites to hook up to your tweeter and a pair of whites to hook up to your woofer. So here's what it looks like at the end. You're gonna come out of the amplifier, front left positive, front left negative, into in. Then your woofer is gonna get connected to bundle A. You can see bundle A has tape. It goes to the front of the car. Bundle B has the same white and black wires. They're gonna hook up to tweeter and they're also gonna run in the car. You wanna make sure that you leave these labeled so that when you go to hook everything up at the end in the front of the car to this, that you have everything ready to be hooked up. You're gonna to wanna to do the same thing for the right side. So front right out positive, front right out negative to your crossover and then use the gray wires in your bundles to hook up the other side. So to give you the breakdown here, white is front left, the gray pair is front right. Since you have front right woofer, front right tweeter, you're gonna use both gray pairs on your other crossover. Then you have a pair of greens and then you have a pair of purples. Those are gonna be rear left and rear right. You have two rear left and rear right speakers. So I recommend that whatever you ran your woofers with, so this bundle right here, I ran my woofers with, you see it says WF, WF. So this bundle right here, is what I'm gonna use for my door speakers. And since this bundle is to my tweeter, this bundle right here is for my tweeter, I'm gonna use this bundle for my rear deck speakers when I hook it up to the amp. I'm going to now show you what to do if you don't have a passive crossover like this one, and you're just wiring it direct to your speakers, and you're gonna protect your tweeter with a base blocking capacitor or it has an inline crossover instead. In this scenario, both Speed wire A, speed wire B, the front left positive go to the top, front left negative go to the bottom. So both of them get screwed down to the same location. And then in the front, you wire whichever one you want to whichever one. So you have here I have um, speed wire A going to my tweeters and then speed wire B is gonna go to my woofers. The important thing here is that when you install the tweeter, you replace the tweeter that you install the inline capacitor that came with the tweeter. So it makes things easier at the amplifier connection, but when replacing the tweeter, you wanna make sure you use the inline crossover that came with it, or if you bought a speaker kit from us, you wanna make sure you use that tweeter harness. Remember, this is only good up to about 60 watts, so it'll work fine with the Kicker KMA 600.6, but if you were to use one of these with the six channel DS18 amp, you're gonna wanna use 
a dedicated crossover to not blow up your tweeters. Now, now if you're confused by this, I understand. I recommend going with the Kicker KMA 600.6 and then following this exactly as I'm showing it to you. It's gonna be the same hookup for our JBL. And if you bought speakers from us, then this tweeter part is already taken care of. So I'm going to show you how you hook everything up to the Kicker KMA 600.6. This is going to apply the same for the JBL. You see we have a pair of whites, we have a pair of greens, grays, purples, and so on. We'll get into the specifics of this a little later on. But since I'm assuming most of you are going to use this amplifier, it's a lot cheaper. I'm going to show you how to hook this up. Remember, you have uh, speed wire A, speed wire B, and you're going to need to twist some wires together and leave some separate. So I'm going to screw it all down and I'm gonna show you where everything goes. Before that, I wanna to talk to you about wire ferrules. Wire ferrules look like this, and what they do is they allow you to put this into here and crush this outer sleeving of metal instead of crushing this wire. What ends up happening is that when you crush the wire, you can actually cut it. And if you cut it, you're gonna have no signal. So you'd rather use a ferrule the way they go like this, the sleeving stays over the metal and then there's this little edge to help make it look a little cleaner and then you slide them in. You have to find the right size ones. There's a multi-variant kit that you can find on Amazon, but this is what you wanna do. You crimp this and you shove this in there because as you screw down, you won't eat through this. Some of what other people do is they'll fold this back, put this all in there and clamp it down on this. I'm going to leave it up to you how bad that is or isn't. The other thing you can do if you don't have ferrules is you apply a little bit of solder to each one. It's going to harden them when they're soldered so that will allow this to not necessarily be broken as easily. You don't want to overdo it with the solder and you want to let it cool down before you put it in but that's another way of kind of adding a ferrule. I'm not going to use either one here because this is a demonstration. I'm going to solder these wires later inside the car. But I'm going to get it all together and show you what it looks like. Okay, so A and B. The two whites go together. The two white blacks go together. The two grays go together. And the two gray blacks go together. So that takes care of your front speakers. This setup right here is if you don't have a passive crossover to install, you're going to protect the tweeter with a crossover at the tweeter. So you come straight out of the amp, no crossover involved. Now we're gonna take care of our pairs of greens and pairs of purples. So in my case, I'm gonna make A my rear door speakers and I'm gonna make B my rear deck speakers. Here's what my final result looks like. Again, my whites are together, my grays are together, and so are the negative counterparts. Then it goes green, then purple. So rear left, rear right. Then these are my deck, rear deck left, rear deck right. And now all my speakers have signal between my two bundles that run to the front. Now I need to hook up my remote wire. These remote wires, you can hook up just one, you can do both, you can do one to each amp, whatever you wanna do. The way you know which one you're gonna use if you're only gonna use one is whichever one you hook up on the other end. But these are gonna go to your remotes and then obviously you're gonna run power and ground from the battery. If you need to know where to find ground or how to run that power wire properly, there is a small summary in this video but I recommend watching the subwoofer installation video because that covers wiring a lot better. This is more about the actual speaker installation. So now we got all our wiring done here on the bench. I'm gonna wire up my actual JBL amp in the car. And then after that's all wired, I'm gonna go set up these uh, where the factory amp goes. I'll show you my wiring. I wanna let you know that you should solder or terminate your connections on a terminal block or something. Don't use the crimp connectors that we're using here. This isn't gonna stay in the car, so I'm not gonna solder and waste solder and sleeves on something that I'm gonna remove after this video. But let me show you what is connected to what. Our whites and our grays have both whites from both A and B, speed wire loom A, speed wire loom B, and our grays too. So it's gonna be two grays to one gray, two whites to one white, two white blacks to one white black, and two gray blacks to one gray black. Then the wire loom B, which is this spare wire that you see, went green to green, black to black, purple to purple, and purple black to purple black. 
Then inside the loom, so the wires inside this sleeve went orange to green and purple to blue and then their corresponding stripes. These last two right here, this pair of reds and yellow are gonna stay open for the RCAs for the subwoofer. I'm gonna connect those next. So that's how this is wired. After I connect that, I'm also gonna show you how you're gonna distribute power and ground. So our JBL DSP amp came with these connectors and they're actually used to go high level into the amp. But we're actually going to use them to go high level out of the amp into our kicker key. So the camera died. I changed the battery. I didn't plug the mic in correctly. So I have no audio. So I'm doing a voiceover real quick. Here I have power and ground coming into my distro. My distro then has two fuses, which allows me to have two power outs and two ground outs. One is for my JBL amp. The other one is going to be for the kicker key. Now you want to mount it somewhere. You don't want to mount it here. This is where the fuel tank is, but you do want to mount it to something, some piece of metal or fabric that's going to not allow this, not allow this thing to move around. I'm going to mount it onto this piece of clear uh, acrylic, or you could call it just a piece of clear plastic that allow me to secure everything that I want onto it. So I don't have stuff shuffling around and then I can mount this piece straight to the back of a seat or to something else. This is just for safety. You want to make sure that none of your equipment that has power going to it can be easily moved while you're driving. This mess looks crazy. I'm going to explain to you one more time. We covered each one in steps, so you should be here as well. So power distribution, power and ground go in. You get four outs. You get two power, two ground. One power, one ground go to my kicker key. One power, one ground come to my JBL DSP amp. My JBL DSP amp has remote in, which is this blue wire right here. It comes out of here, blue wire. That comes from the speed wire A. You see the blue wires in there. Then we'll move that out of the way. We have remote out, which is white. This extra piece of blue wire came from the amp kit that we'd have. So we run it from here to our kicker key. Our RCA is the only thing we really haven't talked about, but it's very simple. You have white is channel one, gray is channel two, red is channel four, and blue is channel three. On here, the way you order these doesn't matter really. It's when you go to set up the software that it will matter. So now out of here, channel seven and eight, go to our kicker key. So we really have everything hooked up. The only thing that's missing is the output of our subwoofer. I'm gonna hook that up when everything is all set up. But as you can see, everything's mounted to this little plate. So I can move this little plate around. I can screw it to the seat is whatever I wanna do. So now that we got this set up, I'm gonna move to the connections in the front. This amp has a couple switches on the front of it. So I'm gonna disconnect this, that, so that you can see the switches. Let me get out of the light. So here there's a switch for input level. We are choosing low because we are using low level input from the factory radio. That amp bypass goes from zero to three volts. So that is considered low. You have high and high two. High is if you're gonna go out of an amp into this. High two is if you have noise. Then we have one more switch here for turn on mode. This has DC, audio, or remote. What that means is remote is the blue wire. That's what I recommend using so the amp turns on and off when it's supposed to. DC will use DC offset to pick up the DC offset in a speaker line and determine to turn the amp on that way. So when you turn your radio on, the amplifier inside the radio will generate DC offset. DC offset will then be present on that speaker line. The amplifier will go, oh, we have DC offset turn on. Then you have audio, which means actual, if there's actual audio signal coming through that speaker line, then turn the amp on. I recommend just using remote. So here we have our uh, amplifier connections. So we have that set of wiring, another set of wiring that we have to deal with. And then we have our RCAs. We're gonna knock our RCAs out of the way because they're gonna be the easiest. So our RCA harness looks like this. Remember in the back, 
channel one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna tell you what's channel one, what's channel two, what's channel three, what's channel four. Channel one is front left, channel two is front right, channel three is rear left, channel four is rear right. So what that comes down to for us, white goes to front left. So white to front left, gray is front right. This is front right. Then rear left is three. Then rear right is four. And now you can tape these up. You can leave them as is. I'm gonna leave mine as is and I'm just gonna plug mine in. So here we have the smaller of the two blue plugs. That's where this is going to plug into. There, this plugs right into there. And you get that click. Now our RCA signal is taken care of. Now what we have to do is we have to connect these wires to our other side of the bypass. Bypass, and I'm gonna go one by one to show them to you. I'm gonna pay real close attention. Remember, if you have a passive crossover in the back, you need to remember which line is your tweeters and which line is your woofer. So your pair of whites in here are your tweeters and your pair of whites in here are your woofers or vice versa. If right here you have four grays, four whites. So here you have four grays, four whites. So as long as you color match gray to gray, gray black to gray black, white to white, and white black to white black, you're gonna be fine. But if you have passive crossovers installed in the back, you wanna make sure you follow these correctly. So these will tell you which one's for the tweeter. It says FW, TW, FRTW plus, FRTW negative, FLTW positive and negative. So you wanna make sure you match those correctly. The way your fronts get hooked up is speed wire loom A goes to woofers. So you see it just says front left and front right. Speed wire loom B gets to the tweeters. So you can see all my tweeters come from there. So these might be vice versa for you. You might have made this for your tweeters. You might have made this for your woofers. If you are following our installation step by step, I recommend doing this. But if you flip them, it really doesn't matter because we don't have dedicated crossovers. We have crossovers at the tweeter. But if you did use a cross crossover, you wanna make sure you wire them like this, that they all come from one wire loom or the other. So now for my next step, since these are my woofers, I know that these also carry my rear speakers. So I'm going to hook these up to my rear speakers. Since these are my tweeters, I know my tweeters carry my rear deck speakers and these are gonna get hooked up to what's labeled sub. So you see sub R, sub L. So I'm gonna take care of that and then I'll show it to you. Before I explain the wiring to you and we finish up our wiring, I just wanna say that some of the stuff we've done in this video isn't what you should do for your install. And I'm talking about some of the wiring that we did back at the amp. You should clean that up. You should tie your wire down and you just wanna have an overall clean install that's serviceable. That's not the end of the world. It's safe, but it doesn't look the best. This isn't a car that is actually going to stay with this equipment. This is our demo car. This video is to demonstrate to you how to do things. This that we did here and we did back there, don't do it. Crimp connectors aren't the end of the world, but you're better off soldering, especially since this can be easily disconnected. You wanna solder these instead. You don't wanna crimp them. This could introduce noise, faulty connection. You wanna solder and sleeve. So I just wanna say that to you. If you're watching this video and you're thinking, why the hell would he do that? Demonstration purposes to really illustrate how to do this. If we were actually doing a complete install on this car, things would be a lot different. But back to the video, back to me showing you. In this case, our loom B or loom A, whatever you labeled yours, carries our sub signal. So sub right, sub left, and it carries the remote turn on. So you're going blue to blue. So then that takes care of that. All these are now connected. Now in wire loom A, this takes care of rear right and rear left. In our case, rear right and rear left refer to the door speakers. Sub R and sub L refer to the six by nines. Then you have power and ground. These don't need to get hooked up. These are just for you if you need to use them. If you wanna hook up a DSP here or whatever, you could use these. So I'm gonna hook this up. 
gonna verify our connections in the back and then we're gonna power our system on and we're gonna talk about tuning. It's like a mess of wire in here and it is. We wanna zip tie this up, but first we wanna make some tests. So here are two connections for the amp bypass. This one's plugged in to the connector here. This is plugged into the connector here. RCA's all our speakers and then our wire runs where it needs to. All right, so everything's hooked up. We have audio. So both our amps are on. You see green light right here, green light right there. Now what we need to do is tune this guy. To tune this guy, we're gonna need a computer and we're going to need to hook up to this USB port. If you're doing this with your own amp or the kicker or DS18, I'll throw up some diagrams right now so you can see where to set certain things to. I will let you know this tune that I'm showing you right now is set to be used with a subwoofer amplifier so that I'm going to take a lot of bass out of the door and deck speakers. If you are not going to be using a subwoofer, then you want to tune to your specifications. It's really going to change your crossover points. The other thing, when it comes to setting your gains or the levels, you're going to want to do it either mathematically, which will get you real close, or with an actual tool. If you do it by ear, you can get away with that. You might damage a speaker in the future or something, but you can do that way to just play a song you know, put the volume three quarter way, so this goes up to 40, so you're going to put it at 30, 32, I would say 35. Put it at 35, play the music that you want to listen to, turn the gain to where you think it sounds okay. You don't want to hear distortion. Distortion is going to damage your speakers and damage your amplifier. So I'm going to get started with the tune now. I'm going to get the software loaded and I'll show you on the computer what I'm going to be changing around. So my camera died, microphone didn't get connected correctly so I don't have the audio for this clip but I will walk you through what I was doing and try to best explain it to you so the first thing you want to do is set up your channels of output that's on this left hand side here you'll see me messing with it in a second we made the channel 1 front left full channel 2 uh, rear left woofer channel 3 is front right full, channel four is rear left woofer, channel five is rear left full, and channel six is rear right full, channel seven and channel eight are sub one and sub two. So now I'm routing the inputs to the outputs. And for that, I'm taking channel one is the output for channel one. So you'll see me tick the top left box. Channel 2 is the output for channel 2 and so on. So this first part is going to look like a diagonal line. The only thing that will be tweaked a little bit is channels 7 and 8 are coming from all the sum of all the channels. So now I'm just saving the file so that I have it. So now I'm getting started on my crossover points. So even though my channel 1 output is labeled as a front left full, I am going to limit it to 80 hertz at 24 dB so it doesn't play below 40 hertz. I'm going to do so now I'm moving on from channel 1 to channel 2. I'm sorry, to channel 3. Channel 3 is going to mimic channel 1 where it's going to have an 80 hertz crossover high pass filter and it's going to have a slope of 24 dB. I'm going to move through the rest of the speakers setting similar crossovers with similar slopes. And I'm also going to adjust the EQ just a little bit. Here's a song. We got the subwoofer added.
All right, guys, so here's the final system. We have a 12 inch kicker down firing. It's a Comp RT, 500 watts RMS at two ohms. The kicker key powers this just fine. Then we have the JBL amp. Everything is tuned. If you want that file, leave it down in the comments. I'll send it to you. This system, honestly, sounds amazing. It's not some crazy loud gonna blow everyone out of the water or you're gonna blow your doors off. It just sounds really good and the bass fills with the system. It's not like you have crazy bass. This is more of a sound quality system. This is kind of what I prefer. I don't need a crane, like I don't need a ton of noise or a bunch of crazy bass. So this sounds really good. I'm gonna throw this in my tail actually. Once I take this DSP out of here, I'm gonna put it in my tail. Right now my tail has the five channel Hyphonics amp. It's powering the factory sub. I'm gonna go with this exact setup. I'm probably gonna take these amps because selling you stuff is hard. So I might just take these amps for myself. Haven't really put anything special in my car. My car before has a five channel amp that was a return from a customer who said the subwoofer wasn't working. So I made that work for my car. I wanted an upgrade, so I grabbed it. But now I might take these and set up in my car. But yeah, I'm really, really impressed with that JBL DSP amp. The kicker key we all know runs, uh, it kicks ass. They are warm, but I have been playing them for about 30 minutes now at full tilt. Warm, I could still touch them. Power distribution hasn't failed. We didn't blow any fuses. Everything seems good. You would just want to clean this up a bit. You don't want to, I guess you can screw it down, leave it as is and screw your subwoofer down, but you really want to clean it up. Again, this is a demo car. So like this car isn't moving from here. It doesn't really even drive, but we put all our trim back. Something I didn't show you. We put the seats back. So the car is entirely back together. Assembling is just disassembly in reverse. So everything's just going to snap into place once you put things back together. The only things we didn't put back in are these two because we still need to clean up the connections down there but that's really going to take up your entire system now if you have an aftermarket radio you ran your four rcas here you have your two extra rcas these would have just plugged into the kicker key so instead of making this connection you would have just plugged those into the kicker key but you still would have connected the other four the same way uh, if you're having issues with your install a speaker's not working you're getting noise somewhere something is going on subwoofer's not working Retrace the steps, rewatch the video. I recommend watching this video at least twice, if not three times, to understand where all the connections go so you don't get lost when you do it, or follow it step by step with the exact stuff that we use so you can't go wrong. If you are going to have a shop do this, I would vet them a little, make sure they have decent reviews, try to talk to the person who's actually gonna work on your car. You've seen what I've done. Don't obviously quiz them, but just, hey, like, oh, what kind of amp are you gonna use? Oh, so then how are you gonna connect all the speakers? Just simple questions that you already know the answers to that can help you gauge how much they know about your particular car. They might know an F-150 back and forth and they could wire in their sleep, but if they've never worked on a TSX, it is a different system. It is a little bit overwhelming for a first timer and there's not a lot of information about it. So if you're gonna use a shop, just be careful. If you're gonna do it yourself, I would say set apart a Saturday and a Sunday to do the entire system because it will take time taking all the panels off, putting all the panels together, making all the connections, tuning, etc. So I'll give yourself two days. Also, when it comes to power, I mentioned this in the subwoofer video, I'm gonna mention it again. This has an 80 amp fuse up front. We have two 40 amp fuses in the back. This is a, I think, a 120 amp alternator. So we're using most of the alternator's power. The fuse up here shouldn't be more than your alternator because you're gonna be starving your system for power. So just remember that if you're doing a big system, keep that in mind. Second battery, upgraded alternator, big three upgrade will help you with that. That's really all I can think about issues. If you have anything that you wanna ask, leave it down in the comments. We'll respond to the comments in this video. If you enjoyed the video, or if this was information that helped you, I'll ask that you like the video, subscribe. We always have content for your Acura and make sure that you share the video with someone that really helps out our channel and helps us a lot. Thanks for watching.